uh, thinking gender in science and innovation examples from research on COVID-19 and robotics. My name is Linda Marie Rusta, and I'm director at Hilden Gender Research NO, which is a national knowledge center on gender perspectives and gender balance in research in Norway. Hilden is partner in the EU-funded project GE Academy. Some information also about this project, this EU funded uh, project. Uh, GE Academy is to develop and implement a coherent, high quality capacity building program uh, on gender equality in research and innovation. And uh, we do that by uh, and are based on state of the art knowledge and expertise. And we provide, uh, provide tailor-made training materials and also have different targets group. At also is participating here today. It's decision makers, researchers, but also equality officers and people working with uh, HR. And we have developed different formats, workshops, webinars, in-person and online trainings, summer schools, and we also have a doc. And we have to admit we have called this a workshop, although workshops usually uh, are more, much more participatory and the one you are joining today. Uh, we have made two uh, polls, uh, which uh, give you some um, uh, participating possibilities, but we are aware of, uh, of the limits. And that's also due to the situation. We had to turn everything on to online courses. Um, you can also read more about GE Academy on the website, and I'm sure we'll put the link to this website in also in the chat. Uh, the online workshop today addresses how the inclusion of sex gender dimension prom uh, improves scientific research and innovation. Uh, and this is uh, the today's program. And uh, together with us today, I am happy to introduce you to uh, the speakers who are Sabine ortelt Prigione. She is a physician, researcher and organizational consultant. Sabine is specialized in internal medicine, public health and sex and gender sensitive healthcare. The goal of her team of the Rad Baudum is developing and supporting the implementation of sex and gender sensitive research in healthcare. As a group, they focus on uh, advocacy and outreach activities, development of new methods for the investigation of sex and gender in medicine, and implementation and evaluation of sex and gender sensitive approaches in clinical practice. We also have with us Roger Söro. He is a researcher at the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies of Culture and the Department of Neuroscience at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Söro works on several national and EU funded projects on digitalization and robotization and has published widely on Get on technologies, social robots, and gender, including his recent paper, Querying Machines, Nature Machine Intelligence, and the social dimension of domesticating technology, interactions between older adults, caregivers, and robots in the home. And these two articles, I guess, then was published in Technological Forecast and Social Change. And then we have Matthias Nielsen, Associate Professor at the Department of Sociology, University of Copenhagen. Uh, Matthias, uh, his research focuses on gender in science, including how gender diversity is linked to knowledge outcomes. His PhD dissertation entitled New and Persistent Gender Equality Challenges in Academia, and it was defen um, defended in 2015 after which he undertook postdoctoral re uh, research in gendered innovations at Stanford University. N Nielsen has also published numerous papers on the topic of gender in science. I was very happy to be part of the EU expert group, Gender Innovation, together with Sabine, Roger and Matthias. So here 
uh, we are members um, previous i have to say it's uh, not <laughs> so longer there um, members of the expert group gender innovation two so today you will get a glimpse of the output from uh, this group and you can also read more about gender innovation in the link to the final report, which also we will give you in the chat. As stated in the report from this expert group, the strengthening of the integration of the gender dimension in research and innovation is one of the, gen uh, one of the gender equality priorities in Horizon Europe. The gender dimension cuts across all aspects of research and innovation. In addition to give you concrete examples, the workshop you are joining here today will also give you a short introduction to what the gender dimension means, what it is, and how to do it. Trine Rokosvik will now give you a presentation of the booklet, What is the Gender Dimension in Research? Examples from Interdisciplinary Research and this the booklet was written by Trina and myself. Trina is Senior Advisor at Hilden Gender Research NO. And Trina holds a PhD in History from the University of Oslo, specialized in the history of feminism and women's movements. And at Hilden, uh, Hild Trina is engaged in the cooperation we have with the GE uh, Academy. And I also will put the link to this booklet uh, in the chat. Um, I also have to say before Tina starts, do not hesitate to ask questions in the chat. Trina and I will moderate and pick up questions uh, during the sessions and we will see what uh, we will have time for discussion in the last round table. So please do not hesitate to, to, to write down some questions in the chat. Um, also, at the end of the roundtable, you will get an exit questionnaire, uh, also a link in the chat, which we kindly ask you to fill in. Uh, yes, I think that's all from me now. And Trina, the screen is yours. Thank you. You can hear me all? Yes, you hear me? Thank you, Linda, for this introduction and uh, good afternoon. Uh, today, I will make a short introduction about what the gender dimension in research might entail, focusing on different ways gender can be dealt with in research. But let me start with a quote. Slide, please, Linda. This quote, gender perspectives are relevant when the research has or may have consequences for people, is from the rector of the Norwegian School of Economics and illustrates well why it is important to learn more about the gender dimension in research. I think we can all agree that a lot of research has consequences for people. The quote is from an interview we did when we, uh, that is Linda and I, made the handbook or booklet, What is the Gender Dimension in Research, which I will present to you very soon. But first, let me emphasize that within Horizon Europe, integrating the gender dimension into research and innovation content is a requirement across the whole program. Slide, please. In this fact sheet from February this year, uh, gender equality, a strengthened commitment in Horizon Europe that I guess several of you are familiar with, it is clearly stated that one of the main novelties of the program is the integration of the gender dimension into research and innovation content, sex and gender analysis, becomes a requirement by default across the whole program. For more information, see the Gender Innovation Policy Report that I linked to you uh, earlier on in the chat. Another main novelty is that the gender equality plans will be mandatory to get funding from Horizon Europe. So now the question is, what does it mean to integrate the gender dimension into research content? Slide, please. Whereas the representation of women and men, or gender balance, that is, is it also called, in research groups is rather um, um, complicated to understand what means. Even it can be, of course, very difficult to accomplish. Gender in research content, or sex and gender analysis, is more complicated. That is why we made this handbook or booklet in 2018. 
The purpose was to meet the need of researchers and others who want to learn more about how to integrate the gender dimension in research content. Our idea was that the best way to do so was by presenting concrete examples from studies within a variety of interdisciplinary research fields, such as energy, transport, agriculture, climate and environment, health and health and safe societies. You can see the index on the slides. The booklet was originally published in Norwegian and then translated into English and adopted to an international audience. And you can find uh, the link to the English word version in the chat. Some weeks ago, we were actually contacted by a university in Spain because they wanted to translate it into Spanish. So we are very pleased that this booklet is spreading throughout Europe. In addition to the case studies within the thematic areas you see here, the booklet contains a checklist to be used for researchers who are preparing applications. Also, in the first part, we present some key concepts, such as the difference between sex and gender, and different ways to deal with the sex and gender dimension in research content, which I will say more about now. Slide, please. So here you can see some central concepts, because sex and gender play a role in research in multiple ways, even when their significance is not readily apparent or even mentioned. Like uh, gender blind research does not take gender into account and assumes that the research is gender neutral or that potential differences between men and women are not relevant. Gender bias can mean that one gender is regarded as more important than another. As I guess many of you are familiar with, gender bias is not necessarily intended, but may be due to unconscious perceptions or prejudices about gender. Throughout history, masculine norms were dominating in academia. When men were presented as universal for humans or of man as the normative references. This can be articulated as an assumption that what generally applies to men also applies to women, or that women are perceived as peculiar or even as deviant from men. A classic example of gender bias is the belief that men and women have the same symptoms of heart attack. Until the 1990s, research presupposed that the male heart and the female heart are alike. However, the symptoms of heart attack in female and male patients often differ. Thus, due to the underdiagnosis of heart attack in female patients, numerous women have died or perceived the wrong treatment. This is an example of sex bias and how lack of knowledge of sex differences can actually kill people. Gender or sex as a variable occurs frequently in research without necessarily being subject to analysis. Often sex or gender as a variable means to count the number of women and men, and increasingly today, sometimes other gender identities. Certainly gender as a variable does not guarantee that the gender dimension will be included in research. However, sex or gender aggregated data or gender differentiated statistics are essential because they form the basis of further gender or sex analysis. In our booklet, we distinguish between gender research and gender dimension in research. Gender research or gender studies is a distinct discipline, as well as a perspective within other academic disciplines, for example, medicine, feminist economics, philosophy, and a lot of cross-disciplinary field. Uh, gender researchers generally use gender as their starting point of analysis, but this doesn't mean that gender researchers seek to answer what gender is or what men and women are. Rather, they study how ideas about gender and femininity and masculinity and so on are constructed and reconstructed and changing and how such processes are related to power relations. There is also a tradition of questioning and exposing gender stereotypes and norms. However, what we are dealing with here today is more like the gender dimension in research, which means that gender is part of the research design and is systematically controlled for throughout the research process without necessarily being the main focus of analysis. 
uh, research that takes the gender dimension is into account is found in most scientific disciplines as well. To take an example, within law, one may investigate how gender neutral legal rules affect women and men differently. Retirement pension rules, for instance, are in many countries gender neutral and based on previous income. This theoretically gender neutral rule may have different outcomes for women and men. Women who have worked part-time or stayed at home to take care of house and children receive much lower pensions than men and women also who have worked full-time. However, it is important to keep in mind that integrating a gender and or sex dimension in research does not necessarily mean to always focus on the differences between women and men. Even that can of course be relevant in many cases, not least in medicine. On the contrary, we argue that it is important also to look at varieties within the sex or gender categories in order not to reproduce stereotypes about what is perceived as male or female. So now, last slide, please. From our point of view, uh, the gender dimension in research is about to investigate how gender relations work in different contexts and intersects with other factors such as age, income level, income level, <laughs> education, ethnicity, where you live, and so on. I would also like to highlight that the sex and gender dimension is in research is not the same as to always focus on differences between men and women, as I just said. Even that can, of course, be relevant in many cases, as maybe also Sabine will show you. In addition, it is essential to critically reflect upon one's own and others often unconscious assumption about gender and not to reproduce gender stereotypes in research. We don't provide any absolute answers to what sex or gender perspectives are, rather what they may entail. We want to inspire researchers, but not to dictate them. Each researcher must find their own way of dealing with such perspectives according to their field of research. And now I will give you the screen to Sabina urtelt Prigiona, who will tell you more about her research on the impact of sex and gender on the COVID-19 pandemic.